Thank you very much, Your Excellencies, dear Pan-European friends, ladies and gentlemen. I would, like, uh, I would first like to express my sincere gratitude to the host, to our Pan-European friends from Hungary for inviting us to this prominent gathering on the occasion of their uh, Silver Jubilee and the 10th anniversary of the membership of Hungary in the European Union. I would also like to thank our kind hosts for the given opportunity to address you on the behalf of the Croatian delegation and with me together are three ladies from uh, Croatia, uh, Mrs. Neven Kanekic, Mrs. Uh, Neda Matasovic and Mrs. Nada Pomper and I would mentioned that uh, Mrs. Nevenka Nekic, Vice President of the Croatian Pan-European Union, was 25 years ago here at the same place when the uh, uh, Pan-Europa uh, Hungary was re-established. So it is now our contribution to your celebration. Also, allow me to congratulate our pan-European friends on this uh, extraordinary jubilee, uh, then that uh, there is no doubt that the pan-European Union of Hungary played an important role in the process of the preparing of Hungary for becoming a member of the European Union. And I extend my warmest congratulations to the president, Dr. Gabor Ondrashi, and to other pan-European friends for their efforts and accomplishments. The Republic of Croatia finally completed its accession process and entered the European Union a year ago. Fortunately, the finish of the Croatian negotiations in 2011 happened at the time when Hungary presided over the European Union. People of Croatia appreciate the strong support provided by the Hungarian government and especially by the president Viktor Orban in overcoming the obstacles on Croatia's path of accession. We were all taken by surprise with the aggressive resistance coming from different sides against Croatia's accession. We fulfilled the highest criteria for membership in all 35 negotiation chapters. In spite of these obstacles, President Orban proceeded in the manner of a great European and I would say pan-European statesman and made the decisive step in the enlargement process of the European Union. In my thanking for this friendly support, I would like to quote the words of the Greek philosopher Democritus, who said, it is not so much our friend's help that helps us as the confidence for their help. So after 95 years, Croatia finally returned to a common state union with Hungary and other European countries, but this time as an independent country. It is now the youngest 28 member of the European Union. As we know, the Croatian and Hungarian, Hungarian histories have been intertwined throughout the course of more than nine centuries. We have many kings and bonds, 
great historical families and persons in common from King Koloman and family Habsburg, Nikola Šubić Zrinski or in Hungarian Miklos Zrini, Prince Eugene of Savoy, to more recent mid 20th century history when people helped each other during the communist totalitarian regimes on either side of the border. With our accession to a common European state union, we believe that we finally entered uh, a peaceful and stable era. Freedom and peace are the most important values for the life both of individuals and political communities. With respect to the topic of this Jubilee Conference, let us all be reminded about the importance of our pan-European ideas in the contemporary process of the building of the European identity. A quarter of a century ago, when the pan-European Union of Hungary was reestablished and under the impression of democratic changes, the deposits of totalitarian regimes started collapsing, Europe uniting, and the world connecting globally, in 1989, the Iron Curtain tore and communism came tumbling down the loudest and with terrible war, destruction, and conflicts exactly in South East and partly in Central Europe. In the meantime, there has been significant progress towards democracy and stability. It is a fact that at the beginning of the third millennium, the greatest task of the European Union, as far as it, its enlargement is concerned, is to be undertaken precisely in Southeast and Eastern Europe. This historical two and a half decade long span invites us to reflect on what has been happening, what the political trends have been like, and what kind of perspectives of life are opening today in Southeast and Central Europe within the wider context of the global tendencies, not only of Europe, but also of the world at the beginning of the third millennium. Looking back on the historical curve of the past two and a half decades, let me highlight only the perspective of the democratization and Europeanization, or I would better say EUization of Southeast Europe. Some authors argue that Southeast Europe European countries need first to democratize and then to start with EUization. It is my belief that these two processes should be interconnected. They presuppose each other. Through the enlargement process of the European Union in the region, mutual support in the transformation process of democratization can be developed. Democratization as an induced change of ethical values towards a communally desired goal implies transforming pu poor electoral democracy into democratic institutions building and the political education of citizens, the ultimate go goal being stable and I would say deliberative democracy. The democratization process should therefore be carefully geared through the EUization process. This process should, should not take too long. The European Union should pass the democratization exam together and in partnership 
with the Southeast European countries as soon as possible if desires to achieve its own goal of a peaceful community, then the crumbling of Europe started a century ago exactly in Southeast Europe. Now, a century later, this process should finally finish with the democratization and EUization of this part of Europe. In that spirit, the Vukovar Declaration, which, we, which was accepted on the occasion of the accession of the Republic of Croatia dur during the International Conference of the Croatian Pan-European Union held in Vukovar, states, I quote, we appeal to all to cherish solidarity without which violence cannot be eradicated and to respect subsidiarity without which democracy cannot be achieved and totalitarianism cannot be prevented. Thank you very much for your attention.